Howdy everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by me, Jack, VintageElectronicsGeek.com. Today on the workbench we have this Syncor model DVM56. As you may remember a couple of videos ago I displayed this as a uh, recent purchase. In fact, about a month ago, less than a month ago, I, uh, I purchased this item. And it's been working just fine, no problem. And then another video, you, you notice that I uh, had picked up a... Um, new benchtop uh, isolation transformer slash variable AC power supply. Made up a jumper to go between the two devices that way I could have a digital output so I could ensure that my analog output is where it's supposed to be or at least make sure I'm not shoving you know too much voltage into a device. Anyway so while I was dorking around with that getting that all set up this stopped working. So I spun it around and uh, found that both the uh, the ohms fuse and another fuse blown, whatever the two fuses are in the back, but I still had constant power to the device. This thing has a total of three fuses in the rear. So it stopped uh, doing taking any any kind of measurement, any kind of reading. So I put new fuses in. That did not rectify the issue. Generally, when you turn this thing on, it'll go through um, a self-check. And when you're on um, ohms, you'll see the, the lines go through across the top here. And then it'll start flashing 8 because there's no load or, or nothing for it to test. Wasn't even getting that. Uh, everything was just kind of um, just random characters, random numbers. Did a soft, uh, soft boot, hard boot. A, a soft boot on this is just simply turn the power off and um, wait a few moments and bring it back up. Hard boot, just like a computer, you unplug it, wait for everything to drain, and then try it again. Nothing seemed to fix the issue. So last night I started tearing this apart and um, looking at things, and I, I do believe I found the culprit. I wasn't really going to do a video on this, but... Um, there was something on this I wanted to show you, but before I do that, let me zoom in, see if I could zoom in and show you my findings. What we're going to look at is this capacitor right here, the bottom one, and I do believe this is going to be my problem. Okay, looks to be about as close as we're going to get. Let me get some light on it. So hopefully you can see the bottom of this capacitor right here. It's bulging, popped out, it's not gooing, not oozing. So I'm going to change those two out and hopefully that will rectify my issue. But that's not necessarily what I wanted to uh, show you on this. And like I said, I really wasn't going to do a video, but because I saw something in this, it made me uh, want to show you. Well, I got this as part. Let's just take a peek at it. Uh, these are the modules that plug in there. I thought that was kind of cool. Since I got this part, I'll, I'll clean the, uh, the face up. This is the uh, power supply section. And we got some relays. And that was something else, too. When you power it on, you'd generally wait a moment, and you'd hear the relays kick in. And they weren't kicking in. No, just because I, I saw this. Not sure if the camera could pick this up. This will go along with what I'm going to show you on the board. Look at that power plug in front of the transformer. Probably can't see it too well. But what you're seeing here is you got a bunch of hot glue on this end. And on this end, the power cable is not even seated all the way. We definitely have a, uh, on this one end, a good, si uh, good sizable quarter inch. So I'm going to pick that off and reseat that properly and no glue. So on to what I want to show you, the boards. Going through, checking them out, checking, uh, make sure I don't have any blown resistors, bag caps or anything, which I did find one. Here's a board. Look at this board. This thing is all smashed down. They just stuck their big fingers on it, smashed it down. Check out this board. We got a bunch of solder goo up here. This wire that's coming through the board, it's not connected to anything on the other side. We have a splotch of solder dripped right here in front of the uh, IC, going over two traces. 
this trimmer cap where my finger's pointing to. These two legs here are soldered together. So I, I, I don't think that's doing a very good job. We have um, this trimmer cap right here. Somebody hit it with their solder gun. It's all melted. And that's not the only uh, component I found that is like that. So we've got this capacitor right here. Same thing. Somebody hit it with their soldering gun. I thought that uh, for a big name company like Syncor that they'd have better quality control. There's other other issues like that I found. I'm just not seeing right off the top. I did find one capacitor in here that was bad, so I, I replaced this cap last night. I'm also going through and I'm cleaning up these contacts. Well, and this lighting, that looks really good, but cleaning them all up, they're all kind of tarnished. I finished going through the, uh, the rest of the cards and really didn't find too much. I, I mean, I, I did get a handful of capacitors. Uh, those caps right there off of the, um, the cards. Power supply, I got these two, pull these out, filter caps, and that little guy right there. That uh, capacitor there's a uh, discolored. Should be that color, like the rest of them, gray, silver. Same name brand, same type. Was sitting next to uh, that, so it probably got heated up. And this is where I replaced those two caps from. And then the big old filter caps came right here. Pretty obvious I don't have any uh, axial leads, so went ahead and just stuck those in. It'll work. That's a uh, sign of the times right there. 470 microfarad and it's counter it's new uh, new counterpiece. So 1980 technology. I believe um, the boards are stamped 13th week of 1980 is what I suspect. A lot of the IC chips are marked with uh, 79 date codes and I see a few in there with 80 so that'll time date this uh, meter a lot more. I wasn't sure really when it came out. I knew it was in the early 80s that's kind of cool. Hopefully now we get the power supply stabbed back in. I got this big splodge of silicon picked off. Well, I got this off. Let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. Kind of buck naked. Here's where the power supply went. And here's where all the cards went to. I think it's really cool that it's module like this and it's really really easy to tear apart and replace. Wasn't looking forward to stacked cards where they had the pin soldered in between the two. Wouldn't mind the ones that you could just kind of peel apart but when they're soldered that's a, a nightmare. I have a uh, what is it a Syncor uh, transistor checker that I need to tear apart that the boards are soldered together like that. I haven't really got to it. So I've gone through everything uh, with the exclusion of the display board and at this point in time I don't feel a need or a reason to get up in here and um, you know uh, check it out. It's functioning, it's working. The only reason I went through the, the cards was I had them out. I might as well do it at that point in time. If it comes to a point where I need to change these LEDs out then I will do just that go through and, and do a once over. Can't remember if I mentioned it but on the uh, the cards that I did check out uh, there was a few resistors that you know were just slightly out of tolerant but I, I didn't feel enough to tear them out and dork with them, replace them. So if it becomes critical that I, I need to then it's not a problem. So let's put this back together and see what happens. Okay, I've got the uh, unit all assembled, put back together. We're going to fire it up and see what it does. One thing I, I wanted to also comment, I, I completely forgot to say, 
was when you work on vintage gear like this, be careful with your iron. Don't sit there and hammer on it too long or have it too hot or just be careful in general. Working on this, I had a couple of pads that lifted up on me. Luckily, it was pretty easy to uh, to fix, but for those that are not familiar or worked on too many vintage gears, that's something you want to try to remember. Also, uh, when I was tearing this apart, the uh, screws holding down the power supply board were also loose so who knows if I was making a good ground connection or not there. Anyway, enough dribble drabble. I've got the unit plugged into my new isolation variac. We have it turned off. So let me turn the transformer on and let me crank it up to about 120 volts. So far so good. Hasn't blown up yet. That's in the neighborhood of about 120 volts. Test leads already plugged in. Got 10 ohm resistors standing by. But before we get that far, let's power it on and let's see what it does. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to see. So that is telling me good things. Tell me we had fixed it. And when I say we, I, I'm talking about you. I, I did absolutely nothing. I just watched. So now we're going to clip on our leads to our resistors. All right, so this this meter is showing that uh, 16 ohms. Maybe I misread this on my other meter. Let me plug it in. Now it's plausible uh, that this meter here is having issues. I've got to uh, Try this apart. The switch has been causing me issues here lately. Okay. 10 ohms on that. Uh, I forgot to mention the color code on this. This is brown, black, black, gold. So it's definitely 10 ohm. Got the meter all assembled, put back into place, and it's really nice to have it where it belongs. Running a uh, test on it. Here on the DC side, you can see on this meter, I've got 115 millivolts. And if I unplug that meter and stab it into this meter, I've got 115 millivolts, 0.4 to be exact. And if I do the same thing with a 1% capacitor, not capacitor, resistor, you can see as soon as I put it over there, so about 994 and a half ohms on that. So if I plug it out of that meter, go into this meter, figure out which leads I'm using. I get the same. I haven't tried it on AC yet, but I would imagine it will be the same. So let's go this AC average, get my test leads plugged in. And I can't see that off camera. But I'm plugging that into my new uh, AC variable transformer. Got it down to zero through the big red switch. And let me just take it up to about 5 volts. Okay, how about that? We'll run with that. So 5.553 on that meter, plug it into handheld meter, and 
and throw the big switch. So like I said, pretty close. I'm uh, I'm happy with it. Like I said, I, I, Syncor is probably more truthful than than these meters are. All right, that'll conclude this video. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. I definitely do appreciate it. We will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.